Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. But before we get started guys, just a quick reminder to press that like button and subscribe. It helps on the journey to 30,000 subscribers before midway through January as that is our subscriber goal. So if you haven't already, please make sure to press that subscribe button to keep up to date of all my latest videos and uh, content on Universe Sandbox. But anyways, with that all said and done guys, let's get rock and rolling with today's system. So yeah, one system from the UCWB and Discord to check out, so a massive thank you to them for sending this in and let's see what he has prepared for us here so uh where are we? we need to be in the workshop category it should already be installed at the bottom here it is it's called the refuge so let's go ahead and see what he has prepared for us here okay right cool so we've got a lot of reading Okay, so, in the very far future, the universe is dying, and an exotic alien civilization seek refuge in the uh, Capri system, where the main star is slowly fading away. Ah, so this is another one of these systems in the very, very far ends of the universe, far ends of time, where there's not many stars left in the universe. These are the last sort of stars in existence. This is cool. Okay, right, so the star itself, so you can see, very, very dim. There's no, really, nothing in the background. You can barely see anything at all. You, if you look carefully, you can see a few stars in the background here, but they're very, very dim, very far away. Anyway, so the star itself. So, here it is. So, 0 0.5 masses of sun. Okay, so it's probably more of a red-orange dwarf sort of type star. So, yeah, very, very dim. Therefore, it's got a longer lifespan. Okay. Zone, obviously, not the brightest either. Alrighty, so... There we go. So, the first of the planets. So, that is this object here. Ancorn. Terraform world. Cool. So here it is here. It's got some moons as well. Looking good. So yeah, we've got some moons. Oh, satellites as well. Also got one moon here as well. Looking good. Nice. Okay. There it is. Okay, next up we have got Atheus. Which is this object here. Frozen world with a thick blue atmosphere and rings. There you go. Looking good. So next up we got got... Um, the next one here, so this is another frozen... Oh, there's a telescope as well, okay. Then taking a big jump out now to the next object. So this is Rutusk Frozen World. And also got a uh, moon of its own as well. Small little asteroid moon to uh, boot with it as well. Looking good. Where is our parent planet anyway? Can't actually see it. Uh, where, where are we? So, oh, it's, oh, it's up there. Okay, cool. Oh, okay. There, there you go. That's better. So, there you go. There's its parent planet. Looking good. Okay, moving out into the further depths. Next up, we got this one here. A frozen world home to the previous inhabitants of this system. It's um, ruined now. Completely ruined. And then it also has a moon as well. Defunct alien spacecraft. Okay, so part of a former area. So, even the species that originally lived at this system... They're no longer here because their planet is at minus 145 degrees. So, who knows what could have happened there. Okay, next up we have got this object here. So this is a perimat, a barren wasteland. No notable features at all. Okay, so you can see, completely ruined. It also has some uh, defunct alien analyzer, defunct spacecrafts, lots of satellites and stuff. So maybe this was a world where there was once a lot of activity as well. All ruined, all due to the uh, process of time. Okay, so next up we have got the first of the gas giants. Oh, no, we've got an Aurapax Comet as well. Cool. Then we have the first of the gas giants, which is this object here. Bigger than Jupiter. So here we go. And we can see the stars getting dim. There's not much light to be received. The star's very far away, and that's the only star you can really see. So, very, very far away. Okay. It's also got some moons as well. Let's see, uh, let's just go ahead and check the moons out. Anything notable hidden away here? Okay, oh yeah, there's a few in here, okay. Got another Aura Pax object. Fitting us, all of the good old regular names in here. Okay, and then the other gas giant itself. Next up we got Linard. Um, second gas giant, Mini Neptune. So where's that? So here it is. Oh, we've also got another comet as well. So here's Linard, so it's a uh, Mini Neptune. It's quite a nice looking object as well, I like that. Very, very dim here. So, woof. Also got a few moons with him as well. There they all are there. Okay. So we've got v Vordello, the third gas giant in the system. So where is that? It's taking a big jump out now. Okay. 
hole in a ring system. Also the most distant planet, and it is so far away. It does not receive light from the star at this moment in time. So too far out. No sunlight to be seen. So we'll go to uh, always. Oh, no, no, hang on. No, I need to close that. Now we can see directional light. Oh, no, no, no. Surface zoom. There you go. So that's what it looks like. Okay. It's on the very edges of this system. There you go. There's the moons. Looking good. So they all are there. Okay. So chicken at the planet itself. So it's uh, only 8 AU away. So I mean it's what in between Jupiter and Saturn distance from the star orbital period is 36.7 years. So it's not really compared to our own solar system. This is nowhere near that far out to be honest. I mean yeah that's pretty dim. But then with the stars a lot dimmer. It's not luminous at all. So there you go. So that is that. Cool. So back to the system, though. So we've also got um, dwarf planets. So if we look on the labels. So we've got Curio over here. Um, rocky planet in a binary orbit around the star. Um, oh, no, there's a binary. It's a binary system. Okay. So we've got Curio and... Yeah, there you go. So they're in a binary orbit. Kind of like Pluto and its moon Charon. So there you go. So binary, binary dwarf planets here. Okay, then we have Rhinam, a rocky planet likely to be ejected in the incoming years. That's over here. It has a small moon of itself as well. There you go. It's called Cap. So there is that there. Okay. Current inhabitants, the Anconians, exotic alien who seeks refuge in the dying universe. And as their name suggests, they inhabit the Ancorn planet. So if we go ahead and head all the way back, so that is the closest to the star. Because it's the only planet that really receives any temperature. I mean, look, the second planet is minus 144. Ancorn is the only planet that has any chance of temperature. And even this one's at minus 96. Maybe they can survive in slightly colder conditions than us humans. But, um, yeah, even then, still not particularly warm. So, there you go. So, if we have a look here. We can close the description. Oh, no, there is more. Oh, there's more to read. Okay. So, previous inhabitants, the Corallians, ancient civilization from which little is present that's tied to them. They were a type 2 civilization with control over their home system. They likely left the system a long time. I say left the system, okay. And there was also another species, hypothetical civilization that once inhabited the system alongside the other ones. Because um, right, it's like used to lie within the Hatable zones, where are we? So that is this object here. Okay. It's not too far from what was an Earth-like world. Okay. Um, it's too far. It's not too far from what they think was an Earth world. They would mostly like went under stink, um, under the other influences or um, Carolinian influence, or never even existed in the first place. It's too small to hold anything substantial for life to develop, develop somewhat like Mars. Okay, and it just doesn't get the temperature either. I mean, look, it's way, way out there. If we put the zone on. That's nowhere near it. So it's completely out of the action. Nowhere near it. Um, there you go. So we have a little look at its um, stats. So see, it's Half the size of Earth, pretty much there. Uh. Okay. So if we actually had a look at this, uh, the star itself again. So look, it's only... That's very dim. So maybe, is it just a, a red dwarf? Or is it a star that's losing luminosity, maybe? I mean... Whew, it's not much, didn't say too much about how the star works. So I mean, maybe... Maybe as the star gets older, maybe it slowly gets more luminous. So maybe, maybe one day... This is all hypothetical. Maybe this planet can one day see the temperature once more if you put it to zero degrees. Maybe. Just maybe. There you go. So you can see what it used to look like before it all froze up. But it looks like that isn't even enough. Maybe uh, 1.31 luminosity is done. There you go. Even then, it still doesn't get the temperature it needs. Uh, luminosity, again. I mean, I don't think a star this small would get very bright. So, I mean, this is kind of a bit too much. But you can see here, this planet would eventually melt. The second planet, that was frozen up. That's still uh, cooling. If you put it to zero degrees, that does warm up again. Okay. But yeah, the third planet out. Even even then, it's just getting the temperature it needs now. So, I mean, this is a world that would need a lot of luminosity to really work um, in this system. And then I don't think anything further out would really receive anything, would it? And this one gets it as well, but... There's no way this next planet would get anything. Yeah, that gets cold. So the zone is just... Does not reach far enough out here. But at least the planet at the end would receive light finally, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Nice. Go to... Uh, realistic. Yeah, it would receive light. There you go. Hey. Looking good. Cool. 
There we are. But that does it for this simulation, Kai. So, yeah, massive thank you again to WB for sending the simulation in. Quite an interesting read, this one as well. So, the refuge. So, I like it. Really, really cool. So, again, a massive thank you to him for sending that in, guys. And also, if you like this system, make sure to go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe for more. Like I said, help us on the journey to 30,000 subscribers by mid-January. That's our uh, subscriber goal. And, yeah, guys, I really hope you enjoyed it once more. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. And, yeah, that all said and done, guys. Make sure you all have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.